Hello students. Today we are going to start another chapter of operating system and the topic name is memory management. We will discuss what is the background of memory management in operating system and we will also discuss various uh, memory management schemes like single electrode partition, single locator partition, multiple partition, swapping and confusion location. The remaining topic is in segmentation and segmentation with paging and their concepts we will discuss in the next presentation. Let us start what is the background behind memory management in the operating system. We know that memory consists of large array of words and bytes and every location, every word or bytes in the memory having a unique address. This is the way by which we can identify each location and unity. During the execution of the program, when CPU fetches instruction from the memory, according to the value of the program counter, this instruction may cause additional loading from and storing to specific memory address. The program must be brought into the memory and placed within the process for uh, so that it can execute by the operating system. An inspection execution cycle first fetches an instruction from the memory and the instruction is then decoded and may cause uh, operands to be fetched from to fetch from the memory. After the inspection has been executed, the operands or result may also be stored back to the memory. So uh, during the execution of any process, during the, during the execution of any program, many times we need to fetch the memory, uh, memory locations. At the same time, after calculating or processing or computation, we need to store the result uh, uh, back to the memory. For this purpose, we need memory management concepts. The basic hardware for memory management. CPU can access the main memory directly. Main memory here uh, refers to the ring, random access memory. So uh, during the execution of the program, CPU can uh, uh, access the ring and the, all the CPU register directly. But the required operands and data are available either, either in the memory or in the one of the CPU register, then CPU need, need not to refer to the uh, secondary memory, that is your uh, hard disk or any other memory that, uh, that can be used to store large volume of data. But if the data are not in the main memory, they must be moved uh, there before the CPU can operate on them. At the same time, we must ensure correct operation helps to protect the operating system from access uh, by the user processes. Because in the same main memory, the operating system as well as the process are loading. So we need some mechanism by which both memory and uh, memory for the process and memory for the operating system separate each other. At the same time, we must also ensure to protect user processes, processes from one to another. We need to know the range of legal addresses that the process may access and, the, and to ensure that the process can access only these legal addresses. We also need some mechanism by which we can protect the memory for one process from another. This protection must be provided by the hardware and that can be implemented by several ways. So what are these several ways to implement this basic hardware to protect the operating system from the user processes, one process uh, memory from another process memory and so on. So we can provide this protection by using uh, two registers either using base register or using limit register or using bulk of them. So the base register holds the smallest legal, uh, legal physical memory address for any process or any program. Where the limit register specifies the size of size of that range. For example, if the base register contains 300 uh, 
zero 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 four zero and the limit register contains one two zero nine double zero. It means that the program can legally access all the addresses starting from three zero 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 four zero plus one two zero nine zero zero that is four two zero nine four zero. So these are the legal addresses that are generated that can be generated by the process or program whose base register value is three zero 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 four zero and the limit register uh, contains one two zero nine double zero. So using base register and limit register, you can protect the memory addresses generated for one uh, process, or we uh, can ensure that they are not interfering with each other. The same example can be shown using this diagram. You can see uh, the uh, this, uh, the addresses for one any process starting from three zero zero four zero and the limit register contains one two zero nine double zero. So these are the legal addresses that can be generated for that process. So now we are going to discuss what are various partition scheme. For memory management, the simplest partitioning scheme is single absolute partition. This scheme requires no hardware support. In this scheme, memory is generally divided into two parts. One part is used for operating system itself, another part is used for executing the uh, user programs. But due to the absence of the hardware, there is nothing to prevent programs. From corrupting the operating system, any program accidentally or intentionally can access the operating system contents. Addresses in the code may be bounded to the particular memory locations at either compile time or load time. If the program that has been bound to the memory location at the compile time are called absolute code, and if the binding occurs at the low time uh, of the time of the program is called the relocatable code. Let us discuss single absolute partition. Protection can be uh, the protection mechanism can be incorporated by a hardware based transistor. Generally, whenever a program executes, first the operating system loads the base register for that process. It means the value of the base register for every program is different. The base register contains the lowest legal address ac accessible by the user program. The hardware compares each address generated by the uh, user program with the base register. If uh, any list, uh, any uh, value of any uh, address that is that is greater than or greater than the lo logical address generated by the CPU, then it will have the memory trap address. Error. Address less than base register causes the memory fault trap into the operating system. So we can uh, understand this concept. Uh, Similar to partition with the help of this diagram, whenever a CPU is executing any program, it generates the logical addresses. These logical addresses are compared with the value of the base register. It must be less than or equal to the value of the base register. If it uh, does, uh, uh, this address is more less than or equal to the logical address and uh, value of the base register, then there is a trap addressing error and if it is so, it will uh, calculate the uh, uh, physical address and this physical address can be mapped into the actual memory. But in the other scheme, single relocatable partition, instead of base register, we use the relocation register. So how this relocation register is used in the single relocatable partition? Operating system loads this register with the starting address of this process. 
we had to continue the location register to the address generated by the CPU that is logical address for example if the logical address is 300 and the relocation register contains 16000 then the physical address can be calculated by adding the uh, logical address into the uh, with the content of the uh, relocation register that is 16300 we can understand this concept with the help of this uh, diagram for example, if we are generating a logical address, say 300, we will compare, uh, we, will, uh, we will add the content of the relocation register with the logical address to find out the actual physical address. This animation is showing how to calculate the logical address, how to convert the logical address into the physical address in case of single relocation partition. But, in the real world, a program does not contain single process at a time. Multiple processes can run simultaneously in uh, the operating system. It means the multiple processes can reside in the memory at a time. So, in a single process, scheme, only one process can reside in the memory and can be executed by the CPU. But in a multiple programming environment, multiple processes must be available to the CPU in the memory simultaneously. So in the multiple partition scheme, multiple partitions are created instead of single partition to allow multiple processes to reside in the memory simultaneously. So another hardware register is used to mark the end of the partition and this is known as, this is done with the help of limit register. So this register may contain size of the partition is called size register or limit register. So what uh, we do in the multiple partition? The logical address is generated by the CPU. First, we will, com uh, we will com uh, compare this logical address with the size register. So all the addresses that are generated by the CPU for any process must be less than the content of the size register. If it is so, we will add the content of the relocation register to find out the actual physical address. And if the logical addresses are no less than the size register, it means it means the logical address are crossing the limit of any process or limit of the locations accessed by any process. So there is a trap, memory trap, addressing error. So by adding the content of the relocation register with the logical address, we can find out the physical address when all the logical addresses are less than the content of the size register. Let us discuss what is address binding, what are various address binding schemes. A program is signed on a disk as a binary executable file. To be executed, the program must be brought into the memory and placed within the process. At that moment, the, uh, it depends on the memory management in use, the process may be moved between the disk and the memory during its execution. So at that time, input queue is a queue, the process on the disk that are waiting to be brought into the memory for execution from the input queue. This is also known as long term schedule. A user program will go through several steps before uh, being executed. These are various steps processing of any user program. Initially, whenever we develop any program, this is known as source program. The source program cannot be understood, uh, can, cannot be understood by the uh, uh, or, uh, system directly, so we need to convert the source program to the binary code so that it can be understood by the uh, computer. This translation is done with the help of uh, some translator, it may be compiler or assembler. So, uh, uh, this is known as compile time. When we are compiling any source program, we may, uh, we may uh, get any intermediate code that's object module. With the help of linker and loader, we can 
can uh, link uh, we can link this object module to other object modules and using loading we can load that program into the primary memory loading the process of lo loading any intermediate code into the memory and system library once a uh, 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 like a program or uh, converted code is available in the memory uh, it can be executable by the uh, system and that time is known as execution time or runtime so this uh, diagram is showing multiple step processing of any user program from source program to the executable program Generally, whenever we uh, we we create any source program, we generally use some symbolic names for uh, uh, any uh, addresses because uh, the addresses are numeric values. We cannot we cannot uh, remember all the addresses for uh, valid addresses for any program. So instead of uh, remembering these numeric addresses, we can convert. We can use some symbolic names. Uh, uh, sometimes symbolic names are known as variables. Uh, in uh, real programming, the compiler will typically bind these symbolic addresses to repeatable addresses, uh, and the linkage editor and loader will in turn bind the repeatable addresses to absolute addresses. So, is using these uh, uh, schemes, uh, like, uh, linking and loading, uh, we can convert. We can uh, convert this uh, actual logical address into the absolute addresses. Each binding is mapping from the one address space to another address space. Address binding of instructions and data to memory addresses can happen at three different stages. Either uh, it may be at compile time, it may be at load time, or execution time. So, if the memory location known at prior absolute code can be generated and must Recompile code if starting location changes. But in the case of lower time, we must generate relocatable code if the memory location is not known at the compile time. The another scheme the execution time binding. The binding delay until the runtime if the process can be moved during its execution from one memory segment to another segment, we, uh, we can use the execution time binding. In this binding, we need some hardware support for address, address mapping like base register and limit registers. Let us discuss, let us uh, introduce two new terms logical address space and physical address space. So, the concept of logical address space that is bound to a separate physical address space is essential to proper memory management. Logical addresses are that addresses that are generated by the CPU during the execution of the program, and these logical addresses are also referred to as virtual addresses, where the physical address is the address seen by the actual memory management unit. The logical and physical addresses are same in the compile time and load time address binding scheme, but the logical address and physical address are different in execution time address binding scheme. Logical address space and physical address space. We know that logical address is generated by the CPU and the physical address that is seen by the memory management unit. So all the side of all logical addresses generated by the program is known as logical address space where the set of all physical addresses corresponding to this logical address addresses are known as physical address space. In the execution time address binding scheme, the logical and physical address are different. We already discussed the memory management unit. Memory management is the hardware device that makes logical and physical address. In the memory management scheme, the value in the relocation register is added to the every address generated by the process at a time and uh, at a time and sent to the memory. The user program deals with logical addresses where and it never sees the actual physical address. It means during the execution of the program, the program will generate series of logical addresses and to access the actual data that is stored in the secondary memory, we need to generate the corresponding physical addresses using some memory management unit. 
the same example single locatable uh, location partition location register is used the complete number location registers are added in the uh, at logical address to find out the actual physical address dynamic loading so what is dynamic loading the entire program and the, all the data of the process must be in the physical memory for process to execute and the size of the process is thus limited to the size of the physical memory it means the size of the process may not be larger than the actual physical memory but actually it does not using the uh, uh, virtual memory concept the process size may be larger than the physical memory all of these are kept on this in the location of the load format the main program is loaded in the memory and executed when the thing is to call another subroutine the calling routine first check to see whether the other routine other routine has been loaded or not it means whether these other routines are available in the memory at that time or not if not the location linking loader is called to load the desired routine into the main memory and, and after loading this uh, uh, subroutine the control is passed to the newly loaded routine so what is the advantage of this dynamic loading the advantage is better memory space utilization and unused routine are never loaded in dynamic loading scheme no special support from the operating system is required to implement it through program design let us uh, introduce the dynamic linking before we start what is uh, before we discuss what is dynamic linking we should know what is static linking the static linking is a concept in which the system libraries language libraries are treated like other object module and are combined by the loader into the binary program image it means the linking pause for and the execution time without this facility each program on the system must include a copy of its language library in the executable image and this requirement creates both this space and the main memory so instead of the static linking we may use the dynamic linking concept so the dynamic linking uh, the small piece of code called stack is used to locate the appropriate memory resident library routine because the stack is a small piece of the code that indicates how to locate the appropriate memory resident library routine and how to load the library if the routine is more already present in the main memory when the step is executed it checks to see whether the needed routine is in the memory and if not the program loads the routine into the memory at that moment the step replaces itself with the addresses address of the routine and executes that loaded routine the next time the particular code segment is reached the library routine is executed directly incurring no cost for dynamic linking in dynamic linking the operating system needed to, uh, to check if the routine is in the process memory address or not the next important concept is swapping what is swapping what is the need of swapping we will discuss now so during the execution of the program if uh, program is not in the active condition that program may be uh, may be uh, uh, out of the memory so that the memory uh, space can be released and that release space can be used by the other program that want to execute and uh, waiting in the ready queue so the process can be stopped temporarily out of the memory to be installed and then brought back into the memory for the continuous execution the memory store is a fast is large enough to accommodate piece of all the memory in images for all the users and it must be provided direct it must provide direct access to these memory images this new two new terms are uh, added this concept of swapping roll out and roll in the second variant used for the priority based scheduling and lower term lower priority process is set out so higher priority process can be loaded and 
executing. So whenever that process is uh, going out of the memory, from uh, main memory to the main store, it is known as rollout. And whenever uh, a process, a partially executed process is uh, uh, loaded back to the main memory from the main store is known as rolling. Major part of step time is transfer time but, and total transfer time is directly proportional to the amount of memory swept. The modified versions of swapping are found on many systems like Linux, Linux and Windows. This is a swapping concept. This is a main memory. Some part is used for the operating, by the operating system and the user from space. The making store. Now, suppose a process P1 is executing at, at a particular time, and suppose uh, a process P1 changes its state from executing state to waiting state, which is waiting for some input output to be completed. So, instead of keeping this process P1 into the memory, we can swap out that process P1 to the making store. Uh, until any I/O completes and uh, the CPU or uh, can uh, continue the execution with the another process that is uh, right now it is in the making store. You can load it into the main memory and start execution. So during some scheduling schemes, this uh, uh, op op um, uh, operation of setting in set out, set in and set out can be performed. So that maximum CPU utilization can be achieved. Continuous allocation. How this memory is allocated to uh, multiple processes during the execution? It may be uh, we, can, we can allocate memory to the processes in the continuous manner or non-continuous manner. First, we will discuss what is the continuous allocation methods. Generally, in the main memory, there are two partitions. One partition is reserved for the operating system and usually have in the low memory with their interrupt vector and another partition is, can be used by the user processes in the higher memory uh, area. A single partition allocation, location register schemes used to protect user processes from each other and from changing operating system code and data. Location register contains value of the smallest physical address. Limit register contains the range of the logical addresses. Uh, each logical address must be less than the video register. We already discussed this. Uh, you see the location register and the base register with the, uh, the limit register and the location register combined schemes. During the, uh, but in the case of multiple partition allocation, there are some uh, 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 terminology associated with the multiple partition schemes. Whole. During uh, the execution, whenever a process uh, requires the memory memory uh, area, uh, the memory area can be allocated to particular process by the operating system. But this uh, location to uh, process, multiple process, there are, are some unused spaces, unallocated spaces between two allocated spaces and that uh, space is known as hall. Row of available memory uh, is known as hall. Holes of various size are scattered uh, throughout the memory. When process arrives, it is allocated memory from a hole large enough to accommodate it. So the operating system maintains information about the allocated partition and free partition or halls. You can see in this diagram the some area is reserved for the operating system. At this moment, process five, process five, process eight, and process two is executing. Assume the process eight has been finished, uh, finished the execution. So the the memory space that is occupied by the process A will be free. Now this. Memory area is known as hall. Another un unallocated space between two allocated space in the user user space is known as hall. Now, uh, uh, during the execution, the process nine arrives in the system and it requires memory space. So, this hall can be used.
to allocate the space to the newly arrived process. So that this hall is large enough to uh, accommodate a new arrived, new, uh, newly arrived process, process 9. So uh, some area of the uh, hall, uh, area of the hall is uh, used by process 9 and the remaining area is empty that can be used by the another process. Like uh, in the execution, the process then arrives and it requires memory space. So we can, uh, we can allocate the space to the newly arrived process again. So whenever uh, we have a list of faults, uh, these faults are scattered in the memory and uh, we have various processes that are arriving in the system and want to execute. So we know whenever a process is want to execute, it first it must be loaded in the memory and to load in that process, we need we must have some free space in the memory. So how these holes are allocated to various newly arrived processes, there are three schemes, first fit, batch fit and first fit schemes to allocate this free space to the newly arrived process in the continuous allocation. So in the first fit uh, uh, allocation scheme, we allocate the first sort that is large enough to accommodate a new process. But in the base fit scheme, we allocate the smallest hole that is big enough to accommodate a new process. It means we have to search the entire free hole list to uh, find out the appropriate hole that is uh, large enough to uh, accommodate a newly arrived process. But in the most fit scheme, that we allocate the largest hole that is large enough. So we must search the entire list to produce uh, the largest left over hole. So in the base fit and the worst fit, uh, we have to search, we have some searching criteria, searching mechanism by which we can uh, search uh, either a uh, smallest soul or a largest soul in case of best fit and worst fit respectively. The first one in the base fit back and then the worst fit in terms of the speed and the storage utilization. But whenever uh, we are allocating in, uh, we are relocating the memory to the process. There are various types of holes uh, scattered in the memory. So uh, that hole either can be used by the newly arrived process if the, it is large enough to accommodate a new, pro a new process. But if it is not big enough to accommodate a new process, there are some uh, problems occurs uh, during the continuous allocation, and this known as fragmentation. The process are loaded and removed from the memory. The free memory space is broken into the little pieces or series of holes. So there are uh, two types of fragmentation: external fragmentation and internal fragmentation. So what is external fragmentation? The external fragmentation exists when the, there is an end of total memory space is available in the memory to satisfy a request, but the available space are not continuous. The storage is fragmented into the large number of small holes. Statistical analysis of force will prove that even with some optimization scheme, given and allocated blocks, another 0.5 and blocks will be lost to fragmentation, that is, one third of the memory may be unstable. Unstable. This property is known as 50% rule. But another fragmentation is internal fragmentation and it, uh, and it exists when allocated memory may be slightly larger than the requested memory and the size of uh, size differ, uh, difference is never being internal to the partition but not being used. If, uh, for example, if the, uh, you have here the first fitted uh, resolution uh, scheme and the whole size is 50 bytes. And a newly arrived process requires only 40 bytes. So, uh, out of 50 bytes, we will allocate only 40 bytes, and 10 bytes will not be allocated to, to that process. The 10 bytes is cannot be used to allocate a new uh, new, new process because uh, uh, all the processes, uh, the size, uh, the space required requirement of all uh, future arrived process is very very much larger than the 
available form. So this is known as internal fragmentation. The solution of external fragmentation is a compaction. So what is compaction scheme? The shuffle memory contains to place all three memory together in one large block. The location is steady, compaction cannot be done. Compression is possible only if the location is dynamic and it's done at the execution time. The simplest compression algorithm is to move all the processes towards one end of the memory and all the holes move to in the another direction producing one large hole of available memory. So this is the solution of the external fragmentation. Another possible solution to the external fragmentation problem is to permit the logical address space of the process to be non-continuous. This solution includes paging and segmentation. So if we are using the continuous allocation, it may uh, cause two types of problems, internal fragmentation and external fragmentation. The one solution of the external fragmentation is a compaction. And the solution of the external fragmentation is that we can allocate memory to the process that is non-continuous instead of continuous. Uh, thank you so much for having this uh, presentation. So let us conclude what we have discussed. We have start, we started uh, our presentation with the background of memory management. We introduced the basic hardware uh, for the memory management unit. We also uh, discussed the single, uh, single partition, multiple, multi, multiple partition scheme. Uh, uh, in the single partition scheme, only one process can reside in the memory. Uh, in the multiple partition scheme, multiple process, processes can reside in the memory. We also introduced various memory management units uh, using base registers and the image registers and location registers. We introduced the terms physical and logical address addresses and physical and logical address spaces, dynamic linking and uh, dynamic loading is also introduced. We discuss what are the various steps to uh, process any any user program. Uh, we introduce the terms uh, uh, that, uh, swapping. In the swapping, the some processes uh, swap uh, out of the memory to the baking store to provide space to the new uh, processes when the process is not executing. Uh, uh, it, is, it may be waiting for some I/O I/O operation to be completed. Then uh, we discuss the allocation schemes for uh, uh, for the uh, for the process. It may, it may be either continuous or non-continuous. The continuous many allocations uh, there are uh, various uh, uh, various algorithms to allocate the memory. First bit, best bit, and worst bit. The problems in the continuous allocation is the internal fragmentation and external fragmentation. We introduce uh, the uh, we, we define these terms uh, internal and external fragmentation. Then we uh, give the solution to the external fragmentation that is the compaction. And another solution is the uh, non-continuous allocation. Thank you so much.